Hi, this is JP Hong from Seoul, Korea. Today, I would like to talk to you about the latest updates and some innovative and different approaches in terms of using the skip flap. So basically, a skip flap is actually a evolved form uh, of groin flap. And the groin flap was one of the first free flaps that were used. But unfortunately, um, even though the genius work of Dr. Ian Taylor, it really lost its uh, popularity um, quite early. And the main reason was that uh, because it was used as a fascia cutaneous flap, it was still a very thick flap. And in addition to that, it was a very, very uh, short pedicled flap. It was not until Dr. Kushima in 2004 that uh, we re revisited uh, the skip flap. And by elevating the skip flap above the D fascia based on a single perforator, made it a little bit thinner and also uh, made the pedicle a little bit longer and hence the age of the skip as a, the, the groin as a perforator flap. And he named it the superficial circumflex iliac artery perforator flap um, synonymous with uh, the skip flap. Now, as you can imagine, the groin flap or the skip flap, the biggest advantage is that the donor site is concealed and it's relatively thin. Uh, and it's a it's a quick elevation because uh, the, the medial branch or so-called um, the superficial branch by Dr. Kushima is a direct cutaneous uh, flap, making the harvest very fast. And of course, you could combine it with the lymph node and the bone uh, which is a very good uh, chimeric flap. Uh, we know that uh, the dimension is very safe when you're uh, elevating at a medium size, a size of your hand. Uh, but now with better understanding, uh, we've we've made some more pro progress uh, knowing how to elevate larger skip flaps. Now, the key four techniques uh, that we've derived comes from the latest understanding of the anatomy, as well as applying the imaging. Uh, so the four key techniques that I would like to go over with you is understanding the design, the skin topography, understanding the axis, uh, and then understanding the vascular territories, the anatomy of the groin region, understanding uh, the skip perforator anatomy itself. It has two different perforators, and they act quite differently as well, the medial uh, versus the lateral, and finally understanding the, um, the plane of elevation. Now, the design is quite simple. Now, if you draw a crease, uh, if you draw a line between the groin uh, crease and the ASIS, that's usually the axis of the skip flap. And usually the, uh, the perforator should be along that axis. Uh, usually, um, we'd like to do a pinch test first, um, and then uh, because that guarantees closure in a supine position. But if you want to take a wider flap, you could take it up to as 14, 15 centimeters, but you'll have to flex the hip and then close it and then gradually extend the hip um, through the healing um, process. Now, with better understanding of the uh, perforator anatomy, now we're able to take the flap up to even 35 centimeters, uh, which really gives you a very good size. Now, second thing that you have to understand is the um, vascular uh, anatomy. The groin region has three major uh, vascular system. We just talked about the SCIA. If you draw a line between the pubic tubercle and the ASIS, uh, then that's where the superficial inferior epigastric artery comes out. And if you go a little bit more to the pubic mound, that's where the podental system comes out. So there's distinctive three um, systems. Um, this may make it sound like if it's a, you know, it's maybe confusing to use what puffer it is what, but at the same way, it's a huge advantage because when you design a flap in this groin region, it's almost impossible not to have a perforator um, within that flap. So understanding the vascular system uh, really gets out gets you out of trouble, uh, despite the fact that you might have missed one perforator and then you could take the other one. So in a way, it's a really great uh, region to do a freestyle approach. Um, you also have to understand that the perforator has two major branches, one medial or the superficial, as Dr. Koshima named it, and the one that travels underneath the D fascia comes out near the ASIS, uh, which is called the lateral perforator or the deep perforator, as Dr. Koshima puts it. Um, you also have to understand 
where the superficial vein is. And it's great to include the superficial vein uh, within this flap because if you want to use the accompanying um, vein for the medial or the lateral perforator, sometimes these veins are very, very small. The good news is that these accompanying veins usually drain into uh, the superficial vein. And, and thus, if you take the superficial vein, it's a much more easier uh, anastomosis, as well as the superficial vein travels throughout the whole axis and minimizes your chance for having a flap congestion. Um, the good news is that <clears throat> the lateral may be a little bit more variable, but the medial perforator constantly comes out. Uh, if you draw a line by palpating the pubic tubercle, draw a line about 4.5 centimeters lateral, uh, you'll always have a branch uh, uh, from the medial perforator uh, supplying at a direct cutaneous fashion. Now, we talked about how different uh, the medial perforator and the lateral perforator uh, um, behaves. And you can imagine the lateral perforator comes out near the ASIS. So this allows you to harvest the bone together as a chimeric flap. In the meantime, the medial branch always has a lymph node. So if you want to harvest it with the lymph node, it's the medial. If you want to harvest it with the bone, it's the lateral. Uh, there is also a, a difference in the a perforator anatomy, uh, which we found out recently, which we published about the perforator of the lateral branch is always an axial and it travels all the way beyond the ASIS, beyond the flank. So if you want to harvest the big flap, the lateral perforator is always an axial pattern flap. And this, with this, you're able to harvest 35 centimeters long skip flap. On the other hand, the medial perforator is a little bit more complex and diff diff different. Only 45% are axial pattern and 55% are not. So with imaging, if you're able to clearly know which perforator or the medial perforator, which type of uh, pathway or character it has, it gives you a much more uh, reliable result. In the beginning, when we did the skip flap, sometimes we would have a marginal necrosis or um, a, a, a marginal um, ischemia. And this was due to the understanding that we didn't understand at that time that the medial branch behaved in two different patterns, which we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, the biggest um, role I or the biggest innovation or the biggest factor that allowed us to innovate and understand and, and progress with skip flap is the availability of the preoperative imaging. And of course, CT angio was one of them and the duplex ultrasound was the other. Now with the CT angio, you could see the superficial and the deep branch coming out, but sometimes reading this could be a little bit different. However, using the, um, the, the ultrasound really gives you a good real-time sense on how the, 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 the SCIA is originating from the femoral, where is the, pivot, where is the penetrating point of the medial, and then where is the penetrating of the, of the lateral. At the same time, it gives you a clear understanding of where the superficial vein is, what is the depth, and it allows us to have a much more easier um, a preoperative um, a design, and and allows us to uh, take advantage of the uh, of the anatomy that we know. Now, remember, I just talked briefly about that the medial perforator has two different types of a uh, perforator pathway. Uh, this one is a typical way uh, that it travels in an axial pattern. So. The medial branch pierces the deep fascia, pierces the superficial fascia, and in the superficial fat, it travels in an axial pattern past uh, the ASIS. So with this, you could design actually a much larger flap. However, uh, in about half of the time, um, these medial perforators do not have an axial uh, pathway. It stops. It just goes to, a, um, to the dermis. And you can imagine that this type of perforator will not, will not be able to supply a big piece of tissue. Uh, so for the medial, it's about half-half. 44% we identified as the direct anchoring to the dermis type, and 56% was the axial pattern. And this is why, before we understood this, when we take the flap a little bit large, we would have marginal necrosis. But with understanding with these kind of perforator detailed anatomy or perforator pathway, above the superficial fascia, now we're able to design with much more reliability and have much uh, much less um, uh, complications. 
Now, if you want the flap large, then we'll just go ahead and design with a lateral branch, which always has an axial pattern. So, so this is the application of the detailed um, anatomy, uh, which is done by preoperative imaging, especially using the ultrasound. I think the fourth key point in elevation is understanding the plane. Now, remember, this flap started out in Dr. Taylor's era as a fascial cutaneous flap. So it was thick, the pedicle was very short. Dr. Kushima made the um, uh, modification by elevating above the defascia, but the problem with that was it, it caused a lot of uh, lymphatic uh, vessel injury and you had lymphoria, which was a problem. Uh, but we made the modification of elevating it above the defat and so-called the superficial fascia plane, which is located uh, between the superficial fat and, and the defat. And hence the harvest made the flap thinner and had less complication uh, from lymphoria. Now, a lot of people ask, uh, you know, doesn't that hinder the vascularity of the flap? And if you look at a lot of work by Dr. Taylor and Dr. Michael Sincere, we know that the linking vessel or the major uh, communicating vessels are located uh, on the dermis or just below the dermis on the superficial fat and thus elevating it while making the superficial fat intact uh, will not hinder the vascularity. We've identified this layer between the defat and the superficial fat in all perforator flaps that have fat. And we also identified that it is a very safe plane to elevate. Another added advantage is that we didn't know what the role of the superficial fascia was, but now we know that the role of the superficial fascia is to keep the skin integrity together. So it, it, it prevents the, the, the skin from shearing uh, between the defat and the skin. And so there's an intermediate layer called the superficial fascia, which keeps the, the skin integrity together and minimizes sliding. But if you remove the superficial fascia layer by elevating it above, then you could imagine that the skin now is able to stretch. So when you harvest a flap, a perforator flap, even though you harvest it above the defat, you could see that it shrinks and it's very difficult to stretch out. However, if you elevate it above the superficial fascia, you could easily see that it's stretching out uh, like a full thickness graph. So that's another added advantage. So for us, um, the, one of the biggest innovation in terms of elevating a thin flap was identifying this layer as an avascular plane and knowing that still uh, the vascularity of the flap is still safe uh, because we now know where the linking vessels are actually located. Uh, and it has a, absolutely a better stretching capability of the flap, uh, which sometimes minimizes us to take an extra larger flap. So the superficial fascia has been one of our key um, progresses, progresses or innovations to allow us to elevate a thin flap. From there, we modified further. Now we take it in between uh, the superficial fat. We call it the ultra thin flap. And now with help of better imaging, we're now able to elevate just the skin and complete while completely understanding uh, the perforator pathway. And we call that the pure skin perforator flap. So I think this is why the skip flap is so va valuable because now it allows us to have multiple advantages in addition of actually maybe having better advantages than, uh, than the ALT. Uh, this is a quick video, uh, which is also on my YouTube and you could go and see in the YouTube page. But here is the medial perforator. Once we identify the medial perforator, we go ahead and start elevating the rest. Uh, and then we skeletonize the rest and we basically decide which perforator we want to take. Uh, and then we dive deep to the source vessel to maximize the pedicle length. This is the end product. You can see that the superficial uh, vein is intact. Uh, and again, uh, the superficial vein allows us uh, to, to have less congestion allows us to have a better anastomosis because the accompanying veins of the perforator drains to the superficial vein system. Uh, this is the final uh, harvested flap. A couple of cases quickly uh, shown. A four-year-old, look at the donor site, look at the contour of the arm uh, with no additional secondary surgery. Uh, this is using uh, the lateral branch. Again, the lateral branch shows uh, has branches going into the SCIA, uh, oh, sorry, the ASIS, and then you're able to take a piece of the bone as shown in this patient here with the first ray osteomyelitis. So we reconstructed as a chimeric flap 
And this was an illustration shown by J, uh, by Tak Takumi in his publication in J Press. Uh, we've also showed that the skin flap works um, to uh, obliterate the dead space nicely. At the same time, has no difference in outcome in treating chronic osteomyelitis. So for us, uh, we take a little bit larger skin flap, deepithelialize part of it, and then we put it into the dead space and have also a good result. Again, the flap is thin and it's a wonderful contour uh, without any secondary uh, revisions. Uh, the skin is so thin that it you could um, um, suture together between the external the termiatus, uh, having a this kind of great result. You could always use it as a, a propeller flap or a local flap as seen in this case here uh, with a great reconstruction of the testicular region. Uh, one of the big advantages uh, of doing the skip flap for me is that it also allows me to take uh, the lymph node. Uh, you want to make sure which lymph node you harvest. So we inject the ICG near the ASIS. Make sure that the 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 node that is draining uh, this part of the skin is being harvested to minimize uh, any further potential injury to the nodes that are harvesting uh, the leg. Uh, so we inject the ICG in the beginning, and you can see that the lymphatic uh, vessels are taking. And at the end, the node is, is shining up, and we know that uh, we have did a good job. After two years, um, you could start seeing um, the lymph node uptake uh, in the patients that we use the skip lymph node flap, as you can see here, uh, in this follow-up of lymph scintography image. And, and we know that uh, the skip lymph node flap is now completely functioning, integrated with the upper arm uh, lymphatic system. Uh, we went over the challenges of the flap being short, uh, the pedicle being short, and of course, you could also, uh, which uh, led us to innovate based on this constraint, the idea of using the perforator as a recipient, hence the era of perforator to perforator anastomosis. Uh, a lot of people criticize that the variable uh, vascular anatomy, especially uh, for the lateral branch, but Again, one of this region is not understand. One of this reason is not understanding that there are multiple vascular system in the groin region. And once that is clear, I think elevating the skip flap makes it easier. And now we're able to avoid uh, donor side lymphoria and harvest the flap very thin, understanding the different layers of elevation. Again, with the right imaging, we're able to see the pathway of the perforator. And once we know the pathway then uh, we could actually design the skip flap a little bit more laterally and extend the pedicle length. And here in this patient here, the pedicle length is about seven to eight centimeters uh, based on the medial uh, perforator. And, and this really gives you a healthy uh, pedicle length to work with overcoming the limitation of having a short pedicle flap. In our team, John, Peter, myself have been working and now um, uh, the skip flap is now one of the workhorse flaps. Uh, we use this in 80% of all our reconstruction. And uh, again, understanding these key stages or these key success factors uh, will make your skip journey uh, much more fun. Uh, we also re recently published a systemic review article. A majority of the flaps around 73 uh, centimeters uh, uh, um, centimeter squared um, dimension. Uh, complication rate is the same as any flap, around 4%. 85% um, of the time, uh, the medial perforator is used, and the average pedicle length is around 5 to 6 centimeters. So we see more and more uh, people using the skip flap, and I think this is a very doable flap, and I think it's a very reasonable flap, if you, especially if you want to resurface um, 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 the skin. Um, we made this the workhorse uh, flap through continuous innovation. Um, imaging played a key role uh, in further understanding the anatomy, which led to uh, modifications in, in the approach. Uh, the skip flap is a thin, it's aesthetically superior with minimal donor site morbidity, constant anatomy uh, in terms of medial perforator. You could take the flap in our, in our experience, 38 by 12 was the largest. Uh, short pedicle sometimes do uh, present with a problem, but again, modifications allowed us to have a longer perforator and also the use of perforator itself as 
recipient also allows us to overcome that uh, barrier. Um, this has been our updates and this has been our recent progress in using the skip lab. So with that, that's the latest uh, progress and innovations that we made. And remember innovation comes from constraints to overcome the current challenges we have. Every time we think we overcame one challenge, then another challenge appears. And this is why this journey has been so fun. Once again, I would like to thank uh, Nicholas, um, who is a past fellow here and who is a very close friend of mine, uh, to ask me to take part in the in this skip course. And of course, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. And I hope to see you all uh, very soon. Chile is always my second home. It's a, it's the place that I was I was born, and I look forward to seeing all of you uh, very soon. So with that, thank you very much.